Good day, fellow investors. In the short term, nobody knows how the world will look like, how the stock market will go. Will it go up, down, sideways, beer market, bull market? Nobody knows. And I have put a link in the description from the Wolf of Wall Street video film where you can see the actual to the point explanation from a much better actor than I am. So please watch that when you finish watching this video. Nevertheless, what we can know as investors are long-term trends. What will happen in the next 20, 30, 50 years? And if you are younger than 90, you should be very interested in that because there are still 20, 30 years ahead of you. Always stay an optimist. So in this video, we'll discuss a few trends that will shape the next 25 years, 30 years, and are very important to position your portfolio in order to take advantage of those trends, especially if you can take advantage at the same valuation, at the same or even lower prices. The first figure I want to show you is the US GDP from 1979. First, it is just improving, it's just growing. However, from 1979 to 1999, it grew fourfold. And, and since 1999, it only doubled. So developing countries are slowing down and will continue to grow at a slower pace in the next 20, 30 years. This is because there is more competition from developing countries. According to purchasing power parity, China is now the leading global economy and will be the leading global economy. The US will be surpassed by India, Japan will fall to 8th place, Indonesia will be 4th, Brazil, Russia, Mexico, and then Japan, Germany and the UK. So the trend is pretty clear, emerging markets will dominate the world in 2050. And you shouldn't be surprised about that because up to the 1800s, the biggest economic powerhouses, even if we don't know, we don't learn that about in school, you just say half an hour in your whole schooling, you talk about India and China, but the biggest GDP until things started to go south in India and China were, were India and China in the world for 2000 years. So just the balance, because there are so much people, there are so much richness, the balance is coming back to its natural state. And you want to take advantage of that trend. In this figure, you can see which country you live in, how will a comparative economic development grow, will it be better in the future, will it decline? What you can see especially is European countries will lose their power in the world while emerging markets will increase. So even if a developed country focuses on emerging markets, it will be very positive for the future. The projected average real GDP growth from now till 2050 is the biggest in Vietnam, India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Philippines, Nigeria, Egypt, and so on. The lowest, unfortunately, US, US, the Netherlands where I live, France, Spain, Germany, Italy, and of course, Japan. These are the long-term trends, and never fight long-term trends. Just another look at the projected real GDP per capita. Those are going to grow in developed markets. That's a given, so that's also a positive. And that positive will also improve the situation in developing markets. But their base is now so low that the growth will be stellar in the next 10, 20 years. That growth won't be linear, far from that. But it will go through normal economic cycles, but it will be on average faster than in other parts in, of the world. To conclude with an investing perspective, now we have the UK with the Brexit. All those short-term perspectives on the world, political, populist issues that really lower the long-term prospects. And you don't want to be invested there if it isn't really, really cheap and if your long-term investment horizon is, let's say, shorter or you want to take advantage of some catalysts that are going to happen. In the long term, if you're invested in the growth side of the world, just look at what happened in the US since the 1980s, 1950s. Amazing growth, amazing stock market returns. If you're invested in the emerging markets, at least diversified, you can expect the same for your portfolio. However, emerging markets are difficult to invest. Now, the easiest thing is to buy an S&P 500 stock. You just click on every broker in the world, you can do it. 
emerging markets, it's a bit different. And you have to compare the companies that are traded in the US with the companies that are traded, for example, in Hong Kong. If you have a good broker, you can also buy stocks in Hong Kong. That's not a problem. However, you have to see how that works. It takes more effort, but more effort will certainly lead to higher returns. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't, because we constantly discuss how to position our portfolio, create a mindset to reach the highest potential long-term returns at the lowest risk. There are stock picks, there are macroeconomics, there are investment insights, and all what it takes to make a good investment decisions. I'll see you in the next video.